Greetings gamer guys and gals. Welcome to part 57 of my Let's Play Fire Emblem 5 Thracia 776 and in today's episode we're going to be continuing on the end game Sworn Upon a Sword. And first and foremost, we're going to go ahead and move up and actually use the door key that we put on Fergus to uh, open up a door. <laughs> All right, so Berserk Edge. We're going to attack with the Blessed Sword here. First time we're seeing it. And we can take Asbel in here, and we can trade Bless Sword to the Dire Thunder, and use Graph Caliber on one of these Venom Bow users. Doesn't matter which one. Perfect. Asbel doing just as he always does, KOing enemies. All right, so. Um, Aval has a door key. We might use her to open up. Yeah, I think that's for the best right now. Um, make sure she has the Kingmaker on. She does. Vuj. We're going to use the Vuj here to utterly destroy this Loptrian. If you're relatively intelligent and have decent units and good ideas of what to do with said units and items and you're, you're pretty mindful, you have some strategic understanding about you, you're not going to have very m many problems with this chapter. Um, but if you're lacking in that knowledge, the foreknowledge especially, you're going to have an issue. This chapter is very daunting. I would say it's definitely the most difficult in the game, especially to prepare for. And Xavier procking Pavis. Would have been cool if he procked it two times, but, you know, we can't get everything. All right, so... We do want to make sure we defeat this unit instantly. I'm guessing that the best w for that would actually be Marita. She's going to have quite a bit less hit than Sarah would, particularly. But um, she's going to have way more opportunities to attack. 37 hit on Hell. Ugh, not good. Any mess, that's fine. Well, that did not go nowhere near as planned. Without the follow-up critical modifier, I think this is actually not going to turn out that great. Alright, so for the sake of my sanity, I think the best idea here is to actually move Sarah down and attack first with Marita. Very unfortunate. I should have done this in the first place. What this means is that we could end up taking a casualty on the side unless we put her to sleep. Mm, we can't do that, though. We actually cannot do that. Yep, we have no means to do that, particularly. Alright, so we only have one more group to go. And that group is Nana and Leaf's group. So let's get to it, shall we? Um, probably, let's see, for the best, 
Master Axe. Let's use the Brocky's Blade. We haven't had enough fighting over the past couple of chapters to use some of these weapons, like the Blessed Sword, the Brocky's Blade. It just goes to show that if you're taking a more involved approach to this chapter as I, or to these past few chapters as I have not, then you're going to have way more instances to use these weapons than I have, personally. Uh, frankly, I would rather just beat these units as best as I can without that need. All right, Fenrir. He's actually doing quite a significant amount of damage if he hits Salem. Luckily for us, he cannot double with that. Yeah, I'm not so sure attacking Galsus was your smartest of moves, O Loptrian. <laughs> but it is the move that they are all taking. Yeah. And he got a crit. Luna, Astra, and a crit. <laughs> Impressive. She actually got hit. Hopefully, the sniper goes for Marita and doesn't KO her. As Marita has Nihil, which means that she won't be affected by, like, Adept or anything like that. Which will be great. Yeah, all the enemies having master weapons, or at least the majority of the enemies having master weapons, is actually kind of uh, crazy. Interesting, too. I'm guessing the reason why they put hammers on the guy next to Galzus' replacement, or Galzus' deadlord is probably something along the lines of they expect you to use Xavier to defeat him, but I actually don't think that that's all that great of an idea. Even a fully trained Xavier is going to have a rough time with that man. Very interesting these guys even want to want to attack him, but they've got a chance to hit, and they've got a chance to do pretty decent damage. So I guess it makes sense to some degree. Set is just an incredible unit, and you wouldn't think he was threatened by any of these folks, but if any of them were to hit him, well, we were talking about different stories here. And he's just going to take out both of these Master Lance users. So probably next turn, not not my next player phase, but the player phase after that is going to be when we're going to have all of these seals broken, which would be nice. Master Bow. She did attack Marita. Wow. Wow. Significant chance to actually KO Marita there. And Tigris. Of course he's going to attack um, Xavier. Xavier can attack him back. And we get to see the bustedness of the Braggy's Blade against the Loptrian Fang. 64 attack. 
Effective weaponry is nuts, especially when you have 15 might on your weapon. Very close. That was a very close call on Marita. Luckily for us, close calls don't count, and we should be fine. So, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and heal up our entire party here with a beautiful fortify. Give us a bunch of experience points. Thank you, Linowin. And that should be everybody pretty well healed up. Uh, Marita's not totally healed up, but, you know, close enough. Um, so, let's see. Sed has a door key, which is nice. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use that right away. And then we're also going to dance for Sed. So that Sed can take out this unit. with good old Forseti. We're going to be hammering Forseti this turn as well. Um, something I always do, or like to always do, is hammer either Forseti or Morita Sword, depending on who I'm going to use as the the boss killer, uh, the final boss killer of this chapter. Um, because I'm going to be using Forseti, he is the recipient of hammer My very last, in fact. Uh, he does need the full usage. Uh, the reason being will become very clear when we open up that door. Uh, Xavier can go ahead and take out Tigris. Very interesting and cool name. Yeah, it's kind of very interesting that uh, Xavier is such a good combat unit, but he also is one of the few unfortunate uh, uh, folks in this game who also has a zero follow-up critical modifier. Um, then we've got, of course, we can have Imelda sit up here. She does... I mean, I guess she could physic uh, Marita. Why not? Asbel is berserked, which is not good. Yeah, the only thing we could do here is we could we could rewarp and restore. Man, I really wish he did not get hit with that berserk. He doesn't have a chance of K well critting either of these units. Let's see, is he doubling either? Well, he is definitely doubling Olwyn. With the blessed sword, he's not doubling. So I think we'll take you out, and then we'll trade her over the Blessed Sword. Perfect. Very good job, Olwen. We needed that. Um, give her the Blessed Sword. The Bayo Blade. I don't think it really particularly matters here. Um, the only th like I said, the only thing we can do is I could rewarp with Sarah and then restore him next turn. And I th think that's what we'll do because we don't need her to warp over here. Um, hmm. We should be able to take out all three of these. We should be able to. Perfect. Very nice, Salem. Very nice. 
Didn't need the crit, but as long as we uh, had the guaranteed hit, I am perfectly happy with that. Um, and then we will smite you with the Braggy's Blade. That's a very clean one-shot. Very clean. Leaf is unfortunately not going to see max stats in this uh, chapter. Alright, um, so... I think this is what the game is calling for. Well, he's not going to see max level. Um, he's not going to see very much more combat. Alright, Nana is doubling. As long as she doesn't miss a 99, we are perfectly fine here. He could have hit both of those, it wouldn't matter. Perfect. Level 16, she doesn't need that stat, so, hey. Staff rewarp. Kind of a bit of a waste, but uh, what can we do, you know? Alright, Marita's sword. Not even attacking... Man. So, she did get an Adept proc, which means that Nihil does not remove Adept. That's not something I knew. Very nice. And Killing Edge. This should be a clean KO as well. Of course. Next turn, we should be able to put somebody on this uh, space and the space. Well, actually, we can do that now. Nice. So the only space that's not being occupied is the space that Asbel is blocking. I guess he's the final boss. <laughs> All right. Blizzard. Wow. Luckily for us, that's not that big a deal. So what we're going to do here is, of course, we're going to restore. It's funny because I could rewarp Sarah over there and restore uh, Linowin as well. If this chapter takes a few more turns, we might end up doing just that. All right. Yep, we'll just heal up Linowin, just in case. She's sleeping. That's actually really not good. Um, we don't have any rescue stabs as well. That's really not good. She might end up be... Well, what we can do is we can rescue her. That's all we can do. And uh, maybe put her up in the top here, I guess. And I think that should be fine for the time being. And that's our turn. Ah, uh, what? It can't be. Have these children broken through the seal? Ugh. Leave you heathen. You're an imp impudent brat. Standing in the way of the divine, I'll send you to oblivion to meet your parents, but not before you spend a century or two decorating my altar as a 
petrified statue. All right, so I do believe they can't attack you on their turn. All right, so we do have a couple... Do we have any sleep staves? No, but we have two silence. Um, we have an ensorcel. Doesn't matter, I guess. All right, so what we're going to do here is warp said... And Sed is going to teleport right here. If Leaf had the Kingmaker on him, it would be really great to warp him there, but unfortunately he does not. That would be on Avel. I guess that could have been something I did. Would have helped him with the hit. Um, this is Veld. Yes, both Veld and Raedric in Chapter 5. You could see their stats. Um, he was a Dark Bishop, level 20, with capped HP, capped magic, capped speed, and decent, pretty good stats for the rest. Now, granted, he also has another plus 10 to his defense, because he is on a throne that's also giving him 30 avoid. He has Petrify, long-range dark magic, Petrifies on hit, turns into Fenrir, stolen. Jormungandr for attacking, of course. Um, he has 5 Authority Stars, 2 Vigor Stars, Adept, which is attack percentage chance to perform a consecutive attack. We know about this very, very easily. Um, um, he only has an 8% chance to proc Adept, even with Jormungandr, so it's not that big a deal. It can happen. Absolutely, it can happen. I've seen him not only proc Adept, but also use Vigor Stars, and not fun times. Uh, Renewal, recover 5-10% to of maximum HP every turn. Not a great skill, but I do believe it's the only instance you see that skill in this entire game. Alright, so we're actually going to KO him if we crit. We have to crit here. <laughs> you dare to cross me? Don't you know the power I wield? Let me show you just what a grave mistake you've made. Or, I could show you what a grave mistake you've made. This is my own folly, but this isn't the end. Even if you kill me, Loptus is eternal, and the rebirth of his empire is nigh. I may die here, but you'll struggle, struggle and flounder for the rest of your days. <laughs> Goodbye, Veld. Goodbye, indeed. You could say this is a bit cheeky. I say it. I think it. <laughs> so how you defeat... You go about defeating um, Veld on the first turn that you warp into here with somebody who has one range is you have to do a double warp. You have to warp somebody in here to kill the Latrian in front of him and then use um, and then use somebody else to warp Marita in or whatever other single range targets you have. You have plenty of warps by this time. There were tons that you could have stolen in 21X and in several other chapters that I did not steal. I chose not to. You could even steal some in 24X. Um, don't need them. Didn't need them. I had enough. I calculated enough. It should be fine. And it was. Let us seize the throne. We won? Is it really over? It is. Breeze e breathe easy, my prince. Your long fight has at last come to an end. With your victory today, the Latrian's influence in North Thracia has been eradicated. At long last, the Thracian people have been liberated from the tyranny of Loptus and his mortal servants. This, all, this is all because of your perseverance and strength, my prince. You never gave up. No, Augustus. The people have you to thank as well. Without your guidance, I never would have made it this far. 
I started this journey knowing nothing, and you taught me how to be a ruler. I thank you, Augustus, as a monarch and as your student. I was truly fortunate to have met you. This is... I'm... I'm not sure what to say. I need to tell you something, my prince. I would be poor, a poor teacher if I continued to keep secrets from you now. It was not by chance that our lives intersected. In fact, I only became your tactician because I was ordered to do so by my benefactor. Truth be told, at the outset I thought liberating North Thracia was an impossible task. But as I spent more time by your side, as I saw how focused you were on freeing your motherland, how earnestly you wanted it, before I knew it, I had genuinely begun to believe in you. I hope you can forgive me for all the times I doubted you. I'll not lie, Augustus. The times when you voiced skepticism of my abilities did always weigh heavily on my heart. Yet you also taught me how to expand my perspective, to realize the depth of everyone's suffering and sorrow. My upbringing, strange and sheltered as it was, left me lacking the tools to understand the lives of my subjects. And I think I still have even more to learn. I need you, Augustus. I'd be honored if you stayed by my side and continued to teach me. Ah, as you wish it, my prince, so shall it be. Lord Leif, a messenger just arrived from Lord Seleph. Connaught has been seized by his army. Huh? Connaught has already fallen? What of Lord Seleph? He's alive and well, my lord. Fear not, the message said that he rides from Munster as we speak to help us capture the city. I imagine word has not yet reached him of our victory. He should be in for a most welcome surprise when he arrives. I can hardly believe it. For Lord Seleph to conquer such a formidable fortress as Castle Cannot in a single day. My only regret is that I couldn't kill King Bloom with my own hands. I sympathize, my lord, but as regrets go, you could have ended today with far worse. Remember, North Thracia is now free again. In the streets of Munster, everyone, young and old, celebrates the victory of the Liberation Army. The people cheer your name. They shout that Thracia has been liberated by the son of the late hero Quan. Finn, we've been through so many long and painful days, haven't we? But however hard I had it, you had it so much worse. You possess more patience and endurance than anyone I've ever known. You've been there for me my whole life. Whenever I felt overwhelmed, I knew I could always rely on you, Finn. You sacrificed everything to raise me. It's like I spent my whole childhood sitting on your lap. How can I ever repay you? L -l Lord Leif? Of the four kingdoms of North Thracia, Leonster, Ulster, Connaught, and Munster, none save Leonster have a surviving male heir. Hence, the people want to be united under your rule. No others remain who could take the throne. Lord Leif, please fulfill their hopes. Be the answer to their prayers. The tragedy of Thracia is that these small kingdoms have been doomed to repeat their petty civil wars time and time again. Unify Thracia and build a single prosperous kingdom, as the land once was in the days of Dan and Njorn. Doing so was the dream of your late father, Lord Quan, and if you truly wish, wish to repay me, my lord, it is what I would ask of you as well. I would move the heavens themselves for you, Finn. Of course, I'll do as you ask. I've come this far. I won't start running now. I have a duty to protect North Thracia. Unifying all of Thracia will depend on the will of King Trevant, but I'll do everything in my power to make it happen. I know that's not ideal, but would that be enough to repay you, Finn? It's all I could have dreamed of, Lord Leaf. Yes, that's the end of this whole mess. <laughs> Funny you say that, Avel. That's also the end of this episode. Uh, we are going to be continuing on, of course, the next episode with the epilogue as well as my final thoughts. I want to thank you for joining me. If you like my content, please upvote and follow or like and subscribe depending on your platform. And while you're at it, have a great and glorious day gaming. <laughs>